Hello guys, welcome to the video number 13 of this tutorial. In this video, we'll start to learn how analog signals can be used in industries. After a short introduction, I'll configure my analog input module in the Semantic Manager software. And in the next video, I'll start a simple project to show you how I can use my analog input and output modules. During the project, you will learn how NFC block can be used to define a function and also some floating point and converter instructions will be explained and used. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI and microcontroller-based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content I will be posting through the channel. Let's start the video. Until now, we have done some projects with digital inputs and outputs. At the beginning of this tutorial, I explained my PLC hardware and also its wiring. We know digital sensors or push buttons have two states, on or off, open or closed. These devices can use 0 and 24 volt DC to send their status to the digital inputs of my PLC. Also, the digital outputs of my PLC use 0 or 24 volt DC to turn off or on a digital actuator such as this signal lab. On the other side, much industrial equipment such as level transmitters or ferrometers and also some actuators work with analog signals. For example, a voltage between 0 and 10 or between minus 10 and 10 volts. A current signal between 0 and 20 mA or between 4 and 20 mA. Naturally, we need more than 1 bit to store and use these signals. Usually, 16 bits are used for analog signals. Let's see an example. Well, here is a level transmitter to measure the level of a substance such as wheat or salt. This transmitter can be tuned to generate a voltage between 0 and 10 volts when the level of substance is between 0 and 50 meters. My PLC can receive this signal using its analog input module and then converts it to an integer number between 0 and 27,648. Notice we need to use the user manual of each PLC brand to find these numbers. See this user manual of demands about the S1700 modules. Let's select the fourth chapter, Principle of Analog Value Processing. Well, here is useful information about the analog signals the wiring and so on. Now pay attention to this table which shows how my S7300 PLC converts a bipolar signal such as a voltage between minus 10 and 10 volts to an integer number. The important part of each signal is its rated range. So based on this table when the received signal is in its rated range the PLC converts it to an integer number between minus 27,648 and 27,648. The next table is related to unipolar signals, like a voltage between 0 and 10 volts. In this case, when the signal is in its rated range, we'll have an integer number between 0 and 27,648. Well, the next table is specifically about the bipolar voltage. For example, if I select this signal type for my analog input module 
and this voltage appears at the input, I'll have this number, 1, in my power clamp. Similarly, you can use the next tables related to the other analog signals. Now, let's select the next section, representation of analog values for analog output channels. We can use these tables to generate a specific electrical signal at the analog outputs of an S7300 PLC station. For example, if I select this range for my analog output module, I should use this number in my program to generate this voltage at an output of my analog output module. Well, another important point is related to the analog input modules, which are supplied with corresponding measuring range modules as required. You may have to change the position of these square modules to select the correct measurement type and range. Note that the optional settings of these measuring range modules are A, B, C, and D. And a short description about each option is printed on the analog module. Well, in chapter 6, we can find useful information about each analog module. For example, I'm using an analog input module with this article number. As you see, here is useful information like the wiring diagrams. I'll use the first channel of my analog input module, I mean channel 0, to receive a voltage between 0 and 10 volts. And also, I'll use channel 2 with this wiring diagram to receive a current signal between 0 and 20 milliamperes. Okay, now let's see how we can receive an analog input signal and convert it to the process value in the Semantic Manager software. If you remember, I configured my PLC station in the previous videos. Well, as you can see, I have one analog output module with four channels and one analog input module which gives me eight input channels. As you know, I can double click on each module and then change its settings as required. First, let me change the default addresses of the analog input module. Note that I've used input bytes 0 to 3 for my digital input modules. In consequence, I cannot use them right now. The next free address is 4. Now, parts 4 to 19 are reserved for my analog input module. Again, let's double click on the analog input module and then select the input tab. Here, I can change some settings. First, I need to select the correct signal type for each input channel. Let's select the voltage option for the first two channels, I mean channels 0 and 1 and select the current signal with two wires for channel 2 and 3. Because I won't use the next channels, I've selected the first option for them to deactivate these channels. Note that I also need to select this measurement type on the analog module. Let me show you how you can change the position of the measurement type and range modules. Well, as I mentioned earlier, I can select options A to B with these square modules. Note that here you can see a short description about each option. Now, let's change the position of the last square module. Note that the position of the first two modules are B and D, as well as my settings in the Semantic Manager software. Okay, let's continue. 
I wired my analog input module based on this wiring diagram. Now I only need to connect its first and last pin to a 24 volt DC power supply. All right, until now, I selected the voltage item with this rated range for the first two channels, and also the current signal with two wires, and this range 4 to 20 milliampers for channels 2 and 3. Another point is that I connected channel 0 and channel 3 of my analog input module to the outputs of this device. It's a signal generator that can generate a voltage between 0 and 10 volts and a current signal between 0 and 20 milliampers. Now let me show you what will happen if I choose a wrong settings. As you know, I selected option B on the analog module for the first two channels. Let's change it to A and then transfer the hardware settings to my PLC. Okay, before transferring the hardware settings, I need to power my PLC station. Again, let me try to transfer the hardware settings to my PLC. As you can see, my PLC has turned on the system call LED on the analog input module. Because its settings are not matched with the selected settings in the Semantic Manager software. Now let's solve this error by selecting the correct measurement type. Okay, as you see, the system fault LED on the analog input module has been turned off. Until now, I configured my analog input module in the Semantic Manager software. And as I mentioned earlier, I connected its channel 0 and 2 to the outputs of this signal generator. Now, before starting the programming step, I should answer this question. What are the addresses of channels 0 and 2? As you see, bytes 4 to 19 are used for the analog input module. Note that each channel needs 2 bytes of the input image memory. In other words, 1 volt or 16 bits. So these are the addresses of the 8 channels of my analog input module.
In the next video, I'll continue the current project with the programming step. I'll find a function which will use these two addresses to read the generated voltage and current signals by this device. Thank you for watching this video. Take care. Thanks for watching my content. If you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.